Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation session. It's stress and pain relief podcast. So only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'll do my top up. Ooh. The idea behind this recording is that you get an opportunity to both reduce any stress that you have or chronic pain that you may have as well. If you have both, then you can deal with both at the same time. If you're listening just for stress or just for chronic pain, then the same techniques work for both. That's the kind of the point of this podcast is that you can use both. You can use it for both things. Now, I try and do these fairly regularly. And it's a technique. So I'll give you a technique that you can use. And then you can listen back to this podcast as many times as you choose. Or if you decide you can watch you know you can or watch the video or you can just do it in your own time just learn the technique take a few minutes out of your day sit down in a comfortable chair maybe lay down on your bed and you can just practice the routine practice the techniques everything I do generally is pretty simple um i'm not really i'm not a complicated guy so it's i try and make things as simple as possible so what i'm going to do is one thing i'm going to try and do to make things simpler is get rid of that glaring in my glasses so there's less glare but it's <laughs> it's a work in progress this uh I started to try and do more videos as well as the podcasts that I do. As you can see, the microphone there, if you're watching on video on YouTube. So before I go any further, just to let you know, the, if you're watching or listening for the first time, I have thousands of recordings online. Uh, I've got lots of different podcasts some sleep, uh, deep sleep whisper hypnosis, Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast, the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks, uh, sleep hypnosis weekly, I've got relaxation hypnosis podcast, I've got the chronic pain relief podcast, I've got the stress and pain relief podcast, sleep hypnosis, I've got lots of different, different ones. So I'm all over the place. I don't mean just mentally. I'm all over the place online. So you can find my stuff. Also on my website, jasonnewland.com. All of my recordings are available to stream for free. And also to download to your laptop, to your phone, to wherever. Your uh, tablet for free as well. So then you can listen to them in your own time, whenever you want, without using any uh, data, you know, uh, internet data. It's just there. <sighs> right. So I think to start with, let's just get in touch with how you feel. I'm going to get in touch with how I feel. And, and just remember, it doesn't matter if there are background sounds. Now, I do my best to to get the best quality sound that I can. I bought the equipment. I'm still, uh, I've been doing this for 15 years, but I'm still not the best editor in the world, but I'm, I'm working on it. But sometimes there are background sounds, and that is okay. If you... If you learn to realize that there are other people doing their own things, and I know that's obvious, but sometimes I've sat here thinking, how dare, how, how 
dare that person cut mow their lawn at three o'clock in the afternoon? Well, why shouldn't they? It's, it's what millions of people do around the world. They mow their lawn. Um, so people are going to do what they do. If there's background sound, ideally just allow it just to be there because it is there. It's reality. The reality is it's there. If you're thinking in your mind, I don't want it to be there, that's not reality. You can fight against reality all you like. You'll always lose. Reality wins. You may say, well, what about hypnosis? That's not reality. Well, it's imagination based on what you want for yourself. Because, you know, I can we can do hypnosis, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, Bobby next door is um, putting up a shelf at 10 o'clock at night and hammering. No hypnosis is going to take that away. You might get to the point where you don't care about the sound and it doesn't bother you. You might even get to the point where you're so engrossed in listening to my voice that you don't even register the sound levels that are there because that's not what you're focusing on. You're focusing on my voice. You're focusing, if you're watching a video, if you've got your eyes open, you're focusing on my funny face. Which is why I would recommend you close your eyes. You don't have nightmares. Ooh. So, background sounds are always going to be there. Just like background feelings are always going to be there. So, sometimes... I'm going to talk from my own perspective. I make a big, a bigger issue about a sensation, a physical sensation that I may be experiencing in my body. I make more of a, a deal about it, a big deal, than is necessary. Sometimes, because I have lower back pain, and right now, I can feel it, but it's not really that bad. It's it's almost, uh, I guess, a throbbing. It's a throbbing, but it's not enough to take control of my emotions. Although I would have to allow it to do that. And that's something worth remembering as well. You can choose to allow or not to allow a physical feeling, whether it be stress or whether it be chronic pain or whatever else, or pleasure even. You can choose or not choose to allow yourself to focus completely on that physical sensation. Now, if it's pleasure, go for it. And there's certain times when you really do want to be focusing on that physical pleasure. I would say any time you've got physical pleasure, focus on it. Providing it doesn't disrupt you from what else you're, you know, other things that you're doing. And physical pleasure can be, doesn't have to be uh, something adult. It can be as simple as having the breeze blowing in your face on a a nice day when you're out. Maybe you're sitting somewhere or you're just walking along and you have this cool breeze. Or maybe it's a warm breeze and it feels really nice. It's pleasurable. Or perhaps you take off a tight jumper. Or you take your bra off, or you take your trousers off, or your shoes, or your socks, or trilby hat, whatever you, you know. And you get a sense of release, a sense of pleasure when it's like you're no longer feeling restricted physically. Now that's pleasure. It's very simple pleasure. 
but it's nice. But maybe we don't give it enough attention. Maybe we don't take advantage of these smaller pleasures in life and enjoy them to the extent that we could if we decided to. So maybe from now on, you can start to focus more on those small pleasures that you naturally experience in your day-to-day -day life. And maybe the more you open your mind up to allowing yourself to focus and to notice those small moments in your life where you have these little glimpses of pleasure instead of just brushing them aside and moving forward and doing whatever you're doing. If you do have the opportunity to maybe spend a few minutes enjoying the pleasure, noticing, acknowledging, maybe extending if you choose to do so. To extend that physical sensation in a sense of just by focus on, on it, it lasts a bit longer. It may even become stronger, which is it's got to be a nice thing, surely. And what you'll notice is the more you notice, the more you notice. And that's the way the brain works. So the more you start to notice the, for example, the pleasure you get when you take your shoes off, when you've just got in from work or from the shops or wherever you've been outside, you get inside, um, maybe you sit down and take your shoes off, maybe you just kick them off your feet. I kick mine off my feet. Um, and then you sit down. And you can feel, if you ignore it, you won't notice it. You might just get on and say, well, I'll make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to do this and do that. I'm going to put the shopping away and whatever is going on in your mind. What you could do is take a few minutes. Sit on the edge of your bed, maybe sit down on a chair for a couple of minutes and focus on your feet. Notice the feeling of pleasure that you're now having and experiencing in your feet. Now, I don't wear women, women's high heeled shoes, but I'm under the impression that they're not always the most comfortable of shoes. And I have worn them. I used to do drama at school, so I didn't find them very comfortable <clears throat> back then either. It, well, you know, but to wear them, <clears throat> see my voice is going, to wear them to go out would be, I imagine, quite restricting. So... With the shoes that I've worn in the past, I wear slip-ons now. But at school and at work, I, you know, I used to wear lace-ups. And the tops of my feet used to get very, sometimes sore, but very tight. 
So when, you know, sometimes I'd be in the office and I have to undo my shoelaces just so that I could have, I couldn't take my shoes off because, well, the office would have to be evacuated, be fumigated probably. But I would take my shoes, take this, you know, undo the, the, the laces and pull up the top so that my feet weren't being squashed. And the pleasure I would get from that was really nice. If you've got a top on, uh, something that, you know, you might like to wear tight tops because uh, some people like to wear tight tops for various reasons. Some to show off their figure. So if someone's very muscular or uh, has been working out or for any other <clears throat> reason wants to show off their body, they might wear a tight top. It's not comfortable. Generally. I mean, I've worn tight tops in the past and my tops tend to get tighter just because the more chocolate I eat, the tighter the top seems to get. And sometimes I'll take the top off. I try and wear loose clothes because I, I don't like tight stuff. But sometimes I've got a few clothes that are tight because I've grown into them. Because I'm a growing lad. And I take the tight top off. Ah, oh, and the, the almost the pleasure and the relaxation that enters my shoulders and my back, my upper back and my chest and even like around my neck. See, I don't wear um, tight clothes around my neck. I like my neck to be free and not enclosed. Um, apart from in the winter, I will wear like a scarf maybe. But generally, I like to sort of have a little bit of air going to my neck. Tight trousers is another one. So, unlike in the office, when I used to be able to take my, undo the, the shoelaces, I couldn't kind of come back from lunch after eating and stand up and undo my belt and the top button of my trousers and just, you know, let a few layers of fat out to air. I couldn't do that in an office environment. I found that out a couple of times. Um, but yeah, I didn't do it after that, after that uh, disciplinary. When you get home or when you're at home, you can do that. In fact, when you're at home, there's no reason to ever really wear uncomfortable clothes. Yeah, I understand there's fashion and stuff, but who are you trying to impress? Isn't it nicer just to feel relaxed? Just to be able to allow your body to feel comfortable. Because it de-stresses you. It also, when you feel more relaxed, your body and any physical discomforts that were there before also reduce. It's quite powerful, really, when you think about it. It's quite powerful, the, the way the body works, the way the mind works allowing you to actually feel more comfortable. Not just physically, but also in your mind. And there's that, there's a connection between obviously our mind and our body. Your body feels relaxed, which causes your mind to feel more relaxed which then causes your body to feel more relaxed and so on in that circle of comfort and safety and calmness spreading 
through your mind and your body almost to the point where your mind and your body sync together so that it's kind of on the same page in a sense of comfort and feeling relaxed and that sense maybe in the past of worrying about stuff that faculty that ability to worry seems to somehow have crumbled and as we all know worrying is something that can have a lot of power behind it a lot of power a lot of energy usually negative sometimes a lot of positive as well because you may be worried about another person that's you know love love is behind that but in this moment as your body and your mind sinks into a level of comfort that is strong very strong very very calm calm waters calm waters that part of you that usually has the ability to almost take control of your mind and worrying causing stress in your body and all that kind of stuff that just is not working it doesn't have the energy and I know some people don't like the idea of letting go of worrying because they may think, oh, well, it means I don't care. It means I don't care about my loved ones. And it doesn't mean that at all. Nothing in the world that anybody says to you is going to make any difference to that. No one can take away your love for another person. Especially not someone like me telling you just to relax. And this is the opposite to that. You know, this is encouraging love towards yourself. But in this moment, there's no room for worrying. There's no room for even thinking about other people. You're not even worried about yourself. There's no room for that. This is a time and a space, as is all of my recordings and my videos, it's a time and a space of safety where you just let go. You let go because you want to. You let go because you know that that's what you need right now. You also let go because what else are you going to do? When you can no longer get in touch with that, that worrying that used to be there because that energy's gone. It's like a sailboat in the middle of the ocean with zero wind and no engine. Can't do anything. Just got to just be there patiently. Or you could paddle. Oh, no paddles. Paddles are gone. No wind. So without the energy, there is nothing. Which means the only energy that exists inside you now is comfort, calmness, relaxation. That's the only energy that's there. And you may wonder, well, how did I get to this point? It was, you know, all I did was just start talking to you and 
Now you're feeling more relaxed, you're calmer. That's the process. Maybe it's my boring voice. Maybe it's the words of calmness and comfort that I use. Maybe it's because I'm relaxed and I'm calm and way calmer than I was before you decided to listen to this recording and watch this video. I have relaxed my lower back, it feels no different to the rest of my body. It just feels relaxed. My shoulders feel relaxed. And even my jaw and my mouth, considering I'm talking, my jaw and my mouth feels relaxed. My eyes, they're open while I do this. At the moment, some a lot of the time I have my eyes closed. But the moment I got my eyes open while I make this video and do this podcast, just to keep an eye on, make sure all the equipment's working really. But my eyes are relaxed. My face feels relaxed. <sighs> Something I notice is my breathing really improves when I relax. Especially when I don't focus on the breathing at all. Now I purposely, most of the time, ignore the breathing because a lot of people, you know, with asthma and things like that, focusing on breathing is not what they need or what they want. I like to notice the natural process of relaxation that relaxation has on our breathing. It naturally slows down. You don't need to pay attention. There's lots of breathing exercises that you'll hear on these kinds of recordings. And um, in meditation as well. I've, I've done lots of meditation over the years. Yoga, of course. But when you really relax, when your mind slows down, and when your, your body just almost becomes a bit floppy, you know, there's, there's a certain feeling. And I'm going to use that, the word neutral. And neutral is not, it's not the most romantic word in the world. How do you feel about me? I feel neutral. Happy Valentine's. You know, it's not the most uh, emotional word. But there is almost a feeling of not much going on physically or mentally or emotionally. There's not much occurring. And to me, that's a good sign. Because to me, this feels pleasurable. To just feel at ease and to feel calm. It's a pleasurable experience. It's almost a little bit like time standing still. And 
And as I close my eyes, I'm just... What's surprising is my eyes do feel a little bit more relaxed when I close them compared to when I had them open, and that's natural. But they don't feel that much more relaxed. Which means that even though I've had my eyes open during most of this recording, my eyes have relaxed. I guess maybe at the same level as the rest of my body. And that feels nice. I like that. I like the idea of being able to breathe and enjoy the breath. I actually enjoyed that breath, it felt nice. And I'm not focusing on my breath continuously, it's just the odd one. I just, uh, really nice and cool it feels nice everything's really peaceful everything's really calm and I like I like feeling this way I don't know about you I imagine you also enjoy feeling calmer for no other reason than you want to, you enjoy it. Of course there's many benefits. It's also nice just to let go of everything and just be peaceful. So this brings me to the end of this recording. If you're listening to the version with music on the podcast, then that will continue to play until the two hours is up and you'll be able to maybe, if you choose, you can fall asleep or just really enjoy relaxing even deeper. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.